Welcome to Electron Online. In this next example, again another example of a rational function, we're going to try and grab this rational function and find the domain and the range of this function. Now, this particular one is of a special type. It's of the type where we have y equals 1 over x. y equals 1 over x, or a derivative of that. And so we'll see in just a moment what we mean by that. But if you're to graph this right here, this will look something like this. This is the y-axis, and this is the x-axis. The graph will look like this on one side, and like this on the other side. You could try with a table of values. You plug in a value greater than x, you'll be on the right side of the graph. You plug in a value uh, of x less than 0, you'll be on the left side. Notice when x becomes very small, 1 over a very small number becomes very big. When x becomes very big, 1 divided by a very big number becomes very small. And of course, if x is negative, you're on this side of the graph. Okay, what happens when you try to graph y equals 3 over x? Well, when you try, and I'll use a different color for that. If you try to graph y equals 3 over x, what that means is you simply let y be bigger for a particular value of x. And so what you'll get is you'll get something that looks like this over here, and you'll get something that looks like this over there. So that simply changes the graph a little bit in that respect. Now what happens when you add something beyond that? What happens, and let me get a different color again, when you try to graph y equals 1 divided by x minus 1. Just like before, whenever we subtract a constant from x, that moves the graph either to the left or to the right. In this case, if you subtract one, that means you move to the right one. If you add one, that means you move to the left one. In other words, the y-axis then moves over by one relative to the graph. So now you have the line x equals one, and the whole graph shifts to the right, and, in the whole, and this part of the graph shifts to the right as well. So you get something that looks like this. Oh, 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 oh. Nope, no, not like that. I went a little high there. I have to, it goes like this. See what the effect is of subtracting one from the x, it moves the graph to the right by one. If you add one to the x, it moves to the left by one. So those are some good things to know. However, we're still going to use the traditional technique to solve for the graph of this particular function. And again, step one, you're going to look at the denominator, the denominator, and you say, what can x not be? What can x not be? With other words, what will make the denominator zero? And you can see here in this particular case, when you set the denominator equal to zero, x minus two equals zero, that means x equals two is a value that x cannot be. So when you try to graph this function, there's your y-axis, there's your x-axis, you look for the line x equals two, one, two, and you draw a vertical asymptote there, that means that this line can never be crossed because when the function crosses that line, the denominator will be zero and y will be undefined. That means the function needs to be on the left or the right side of that vertical asymptote. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the uh, combination, the numerator and the denominator, and see what happens when x goes to infinity or x goes to negative infinity. So we're going to find the limit as x goes to infinity of that particular function. But it's better that we do a little trick. What we're going to do here is we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 1 over x. 1 over x. Notice the larger exponent of x is x to the first power, so that's why we divide by 1 over, or multiply by 1 over x. If this was x squared in the denominator, we would multiply by 1 over x squared. When we do that, notice what our function is now going to look like. This is going to be equal to y is going to be equal to 3 divided by x divided by x divided by x is 1 minus 2 over x. Now that we have the function in this format, we can now take the limit of that as x approaches infinity and see what happens. So the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 divided by x divided by 1 minus 2 divided by x. And so when we take the limit of that, this is equal to 3 divided by infinity divided by 1 minus 2 divided by infinity. In other words, this is 0 divided by 1 minus 0, or simply 0. Remember, when we divide by infinity, you get 0. Which means, as x becomes really large in the positive sense, 
Or if we plug in a negative infinity, again the same thing, if you divide by negative infinity or infinity, you still get zero, and if you subtract zero or, or add zero, it makes no difference, which means we have another asymptote right on the x-axis, which the function will not cross. You'll get close to that, but don't expect to cross it, at least as x goes to infinity and as x goes to negative infinity. It is permissible to cross that line, the, the horizontal asymptote, because you're not really violating any laws of mathematics. All right, now, what does the function look like when we graph it? We know that we're now restricted to one of these four, or maybe two or three of those four coordinates. Let's, um, or quadrants, I should say. The, the thing to do now is to plug in some particular value for x and see what, the, what they are on both sides of the vertical asymptote. I always like to try x equals 0, so I'm going to try this test point. I'm going to try this test point, x equals 0, and I'm going to try, well, we don't know if that's the point, of course. I shouldn't really point to that. I'm going to try x equals 0, and I'm going to try x equals 3. So I'm going to try a point on both sides of the vertical asymptote, plug that into my original function, and see what I get. So, my original function is y equals 3 divided by x minus 2. So, first of all, y when x equals 0 is equal to 3 divided by 0 minus 2, which is equal to minus 3 over 2, which means when x equals 0, y is negative 3 over 2. So, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 over 2 is right there, so that's the point. Uh, 0, negative 3 over 2. So we know the line goes to that point. We're hemmed in by this, by these two asymptotes right here. So you know that the function will look like this when you graph it, and when it looks like this when you graph it. There you go. Now we try our other test point. So now we try y when x is equal to 3. And so we plug in a 3 for x. That gives us 3 divided by 3 minus 2, which is 3 divided by 1, or 3, which means when x equals 3, y is equal to 3. So x equals 3 is right here, right there, y equals 3, 1, 2, 3. So there's the point, x equals 3, y equals 3. Those are the coordinates of that point. Again, we're hemmed in by the vertical asymptote, and know as x gets larger, we'll approach this horizontal asymptote, but never cross it, and so therefore, the graph should look like this. And notice that it's very similar to what we expected to see when we have y equals 1 over x minus 1. We have this purple uh, graph right there. And notice that our graph looks very similar to that, just slightly different. Our vertical asymptote is at x equals 2. And notice that uh, because we have a 3 in the, in the numerator, it does change the slope a little bit, but the overall structure of that is exactly the same. So the best way to do it, you take your function, you look at the large exponent of x. The trick is to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 1 over x to that exponent. It puts it into a different format like this. When you take the limit of that, you find your horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And then when you look at the denominator, you have to decide what can the denominator not be. Obviously, it cannot be a 0. So therefore, x cannot be a 2. Because when x equals 2, the denominator becomes 0. And that's how you find your vertical asymptote. So that technique is the same no matter what your function looks like. Now, we still need to find the domain and the range of this function. So what are all the values that x can be? What are all the values that y can be? And to do that, we look at our graph. The domain is equal to all the x's such that, now you can see that x can go all the way from negative infinity all the way to the limiting value of x equals 2, and from 2 all the way to positive infinity, but not including 2. So the way we can do that, we can say from negative infinity is less than x, which is less than 2, or, or not, I shouldn't say or, but and, because it's an and condition, not an or condition, uh, 2 is less than x, which is less than infinity. So that's how we indicate the domain. We can do the same for the range. In the range, we can see that y can be all values above the y-axis and all values below the y-axis, but it can never be equal to 0. So therefore, we can write that the range is equal to all y's such that uh, negative infinity is less than or equal to y, which is less than 0, and... 0 is less than y and less than positive infinity. And that's how we find the range and the domain 
of this particular function.